All right, guys, so let me show you what I have done today, which is to add more progress to the demo that I created and that I will be releasing in the App Store for particle effects with Unity in AR Foundation. So let me show you the demo so you can get an idea of what I have. And this one, I'm selecting one of the effects. You can see that the meteor or portal like effect, I can rotate it. I also added an implementation for rotating and I'm going to be posting the link of the in the description of this video so that you know how to do that and then this one I did a different type of effect it's just a little bit thinner and I also have a radiant associated with it also rotating it around this one is impressive and I really enjoy making this one because it has the it has like a time-based animation so you can see how I'm using physics to to change how rapidly the particles move and also the position of them. This one, is, this one is also using something similar. It's actually really cool. I, I really enjoy making this one. It's really impressive when you start dealing with this in AR. And there we go. And I'm also rotating them as, as you can see in this effect. And I have some other ones coming here. Let me go ahead and fast forward it. That was a tiny bit. Just selecting okay this one is just an addition to what i show you in the previous video just wanted to make it it's now inside of my basement so that's what i did there i just incre increased the particle size a little bit and this is one of the default particle effects that unity provides and lastly this is the one that i really enjoy making as well it's just i wanted to make fire and i'm a i'm a fan of voxels and particles and and things that are cubes so so I made something that looks like a cube here is a particle effect so that's what I have done so far I also make some changes to the UI as you can see I started with three different three different effects on the previous video I also moved some of the buttons around I moved the show effects to the top also a little label that, that tells me which one I have selected and then I did a thumbnail for each one of these so on the thumbnail part, I created a, a PSD file. So if I open up, let me just open up one so you can see how that looks like. And the way that this is done, it's just very simple. I just have a PSD, I have the screenshot. So normally the process is, and I show you that on the previous video, is I go into my VFX folder, my prefab effects. I go ahead and, you know, I make my prefab and then I take, basically I take a screenshot of this. I put the camera right on it and then I go into my game view. I can show you pretty quick what I did before. I do this and maybe around here. And then what I do is I, I hide the, the UI and then I take a screenshot by going into a free aspect. So just something like this. And then I paste that in, in Photoshop and that basically gives you a thumbnail of what I, what I am creating so that you know which effect to select. We go back and then change everything back to zero here so that our camera it's fine and then i'm also going to change it back so this is what i normally do when i take the, the screenshots all right let me go ahead and go back here let me make sure that i select it didn't select the right one i'm using the iphone xs portrait so that's the one that i have selected and then there we go so each one of these ones is composed of two, two components. One of them is the image, and then the other one is the button. The button is the one that is on the outer on the outer component, and then I just have an image and then text inside. So each one of these is basically corresponds to effect one, effect two, effect three, and then so on. And I do it so that I know which one I'm clicking on, and also I need to bind this, the click event of this button to an action, so that's why I keep cloning them. I might change this later, but I think for now this is working fine. So that's what this is. And then the the other piece that I wanted to show you that I also that I've been working on is some of the effects are not completely working. So what I've been doing is I have another project. If I go here, and you probably have seen my videos on Unity VFX Essentials. So what I've been doing is I've been doing kind of like a combination of the effects, and I'm gonna show you a demo of what I've been doing because some of these ones came from from my other repo and I just had to tweak it because they don't work straight up because Unity changed a few things on VFX Craft and they're not compatible anymore. 
So what I've been doing is I go into my other project where I have a lot of different examples as well. This is more of a of my you know place for me to try different things. And if you look at space, you see that it has you know this this particle system is the same one that I had on the other one, but I have you know have few comets. And then I have this comment. So let's say that I wanted to bring this into my other project. So this is what I've been doing. I basically go here, right click on it, and then it opens up all my visual effects. I go into my Unity project. I have everything organized really well. So effects is gonna be the visual effects. Prefabs are gonna be the, the basically the game objects that have a visual effects in them. So what I've been doing on this one is I've been dragging and dropping an effect and then just tweaking the effect around a little bit just to see. But right off the bat, you can see that I get an error. And this is okay, I, I, I freak out at the beginning, but now I find a way to fix it. So I double click on it. And then it'll open up the VFX graph editor where I can go in and look at all the nodes. And the reason why it doesn't work and I get errors is because Unity doesn't have a component that it used to be available on this version. So if you know, if you look at this graph, I'm using the lead mesh output. If we go here and you look for lead, there's nothing called lead mesh output anymore. So what I've been doing is I've been using the one that I have on the Meteor, and then I've been cloning that. So I'm using a cube output, and then I go back into my comments, and then I just paste that node. As soon as I do that, I can drag and drop this, and then you'll see that everything starts to, to look better. So I can go back here, and we can click on my comments, and you'll see that the comment is star spanning. It doesn't look exactly how I want. I had it on the other version, but it's okay. I you know I may, I can make changes. I think that's fine. I can drag it and drop it here. I can go here into my component, and then I get at least the physics right, and then I can just tweak it and just you know make changes to the color. If I wanted to make changes to the color and then make it look, or if I wanted to maybe make it, you know, have more particles. In this case, this is actually pretty low in particle count. Let's actually do 50,000, and then let's increment this to something like 25,000. And right off the bat, you're gonna see that this makes a big difference. You can see how that it's giving him a lot of, a lot of different particles, and we're using GPU particles, so, so this is fine. We can do what we're doing right now, and then you know I can change this to be something like this, and we could go in here and I can make some more changes. Maybe at the beginning we have it a little dark, or maybe red. I think red looks cool. And then, yeah, I think that I think that looks, I'm actually gonna look at uh, incorporating this particle system. And then the other thing you can do is, if you don't like the intensity, which I think is too strong, we can bring the intensity down to maybe something like that. I think that, that works fine. And I think I'm happy with that. I'm actually going to incorporate it into, into what I have. So let's say that we wanted to do that, right? We want to incorporate it into the effects that I currently have. So the process is going to be just like I showed you before. We're going to go here and going to be, you know, hiding hiding that component. Going to go into my camera, and then put the camera in a way that we can we can see everything. I think something like that works. And then we can just do free aspect. Let me go, I think I'm too far from the from the component. There we go. And this is because of the how far I have set the clipping the clipping planes. Okay, so I think let's see. I'm finding the angle that I like the better. Okay. I like the most. Okay, there we go. And then what I'm gonna do is just copy this component. And this one is gonna be my effect number 10. So I'm gonna go back into Photoshop. We're going to be dragging and go into my desktop where my screenshot is and then just drag it and drop it there and we can just make it probably make it just a little bigger and something like i think that works this one is going to be effect nine because i know i already have too many and then i'm just going to save us and let's give it a second here then i'll go into looks like i already had an event in effect nine so this one's going to be ten Let's make it 10 and then I'll just rename this. This is just for me. It doesn't really, it's really not gonna matter whatever you name your layers. And I think that's good. Now we can go back into, so now that I have that set, I don't need this comment. 
what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use a prefab that I already had. And then we're going to go here and just change the, so I'm just going to first unpack it. This one is going to be my, my new one, which is going to be the comment. And make sure that I make, I name it correctly. And this is just going to be VFX. And then we'll change the, the VFX to be comments. There we go. And looks like everything, I'm just going to change this to zero and then zero. I want to make sure that everything is set up correctly. And then one, one, one. This one is the one that is going to be scale. So it's going to do 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0.5. And we can grab another one just to make sure that that is, it's actually pretty big, but that's okay. I think, I think I like, I like what we have. And then what I'm going to do is just drag it in, drag, drop it here. So we can create a new prefab. We can remove it now. Now what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and focus in the UI. So I'm going to go into my UI here. Also change this back to portrait and then go ahead and select 2D. And what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and clone, let's clone number seven since it's right beneath it. And then we can just put it right there. Awesome. And this one is going to be 10. We can change the name. I'm going to say this is going to be meet, uh, I keep saying meteors, but it's actually comets. So it's going to call it comets. And then this one's going to be 10. And then the last thing that we need to do is just change the image. And this is going to be effect number 10. Awesome. And let me make sure that the effect is actually changed to a sprite. So we need to select the sprite, hit apply. All right, so that should work. Now that I have these buttons, I know that I need to add a new button. So we're going to go here and I'm going to add a new button. And this one is going to be number 10. Excellent. We can just drag it and add it below. And then what I'll do here is I'll add a new listener for that button. And then this one is going to be comments. And one last thing, and we should be good with this, with this new effect. So the last thing that I need to do is I need to bind that new button to the, to the script. So I'm going to go into my AR session origin here when it loads and then my place on plane. And if you notice, I have different components in here for the effects. I'm going to add, actually add one more, which is going to be this one. This one is going to be the comet effect. Comet effect. And then I need to select my prefab. So this one, it's going to be my comet. And the last thing it's going to, I keep saying the last thing and the last thing, but this is, I promise you, this is actually the last thing. <laughs> okay, so that should be everything that I need to do. I'm going to just uncheck this and I think we are, we're good to go. So that's everything that I wanted to do in this video, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And also don't forget to check me out in patreon.com where I'm providing early access source code. And in the next video, I'll continue on and just polishing the UI and also some of the gesture implementation. Thank you, guys.